entrance to the architectural library, the Stedman Architectural Library, which lives in the fine arts room of Central Library downtown. And hopefully you got this. Um, I have a printout of it. Maybe you do too, or maybe you just have it up on your browser to work from. Either way is totally fine. And I chose this image because I thought that it had some things, some qualities that uh, really will help us with learning some basic drawing techniques. So uh, one of those things is value, which is lightness and darkness. Um, a pencil drawing is going to be a monochrome drawing with a, a range of values, right? So you have your super dark here, which will be a darkest gray in our pencil drawings. You have a mid range here, and then you have some highlights. You have like a literal light here, and then you have this reflective light here. So we can work with values. And then another thing we can work with is perspective, um, just a little bit. Perspective can get super complicated. Um, one point, two point, three point, multi-point perspective. We're not getting into all of that. Um, what I found with learning perspective is that I realized once I stopped overthinking it, that I was doing perspective all along. Um, as long as I was actually drawing what I saw and not what I thought, right? Um, so we'll do a little perspective on these doors. We'll do a little perspective up here where we're looking from underneath on this sculptural elements. Um, and then pretty much the main uh, shapes here are just you know, a forward uh, view and there's not a ton of perspective to deal with, which is nice. Uh, we can have some practice doing um, texture and working with the foreground. We've got a nice mid ground here and a background. So that's why I chose this one. Also, I just think it's beautiful. So um, you can use whatever pencils you have. If you just have a number two yellow pencil, awesome. Um, if you have a range of drawing pencils, that's great too. I am using um, a range from 4H, which is very hard, to um, a middle, which is an HB. And then um, I have some softer pencils, like a 6B and a 3B, um, which if you have never used before, it's really fun. And I think to begin with, we could just start with um, trying out our pencils and see what they can do. So I'm gonna move this aside, get a blank sheet of paper. Oh, let's see. All right. Can you see that pretty well? Yeah, okay. Um, so, I also have um, a kneaded eraser, but you can use any kind of eraser and a ruler or any kind of straight edge would be nice here. And then I'm not using any kind of fancy drawing paper. It is slightly thicker um, than just plain old typing paper, but uh, you can use whatever you have. And then I have my image here. So I'm gonna just show you what some of these different pencils can do. So starting with a really um, hard pencil, a 4H, I'm going to practice some value. So I'm going to just start with the tip of the pencil, laying it down. And this is such a hard pencil and it's so light, you probably can't even see it. But as I increase pressure, it's going to get darker, but because it's a hard, leaded pencil, it's never going to get very dark. It's great for lines and things I want to erase. And then I'm gonna show you a 2B, which is much harder, or I'm sorry, a much softer lead. And if I start out light, and then I'm gonna increase my value by shading increase the um, pressure I'm applying. 
and get some shading and you'll see that that's a much darker value that I can achieve. And then with a 6D, it's hard to get a very light value. So it starts out like this and then I can increase the pressure and end up with extremely dark tone here. So you can do that with, even if you're using a number two yellow pencil, you can do something like this. Um, I encourage you to uh, see what happens with the tip of your pencil, where you can do nice contours versus the side of your pencil. Right? Which gives you a little of a wider line and it's great for shading. All right, I'm gonna put that aside and we can get started on the drawing. So because this is, um, pencil drawing of this kind is very involved, I'm, I'm thinking that what I'll do is get you started and then show you a drawing that's further in progress so that you can see the things you can work on as you go. Um, if you decide to work on it later, because this is um, just not something we're going to finish in an hour. But I think the weather is with us today. If you know what I mean? It's a good day to stay home and draw. All right. Oh, Lisa says the Stedman is amazing. When you get a chance to visit, when things get more normal and library tours resume, definitely do it. She's a big fan. <laughs> oh, Danielle seconds that. I third that. So yes, go visit it. It's awesome. Okay. So uh, the first thing I think is important to do, um, whether you have it up on your screen or if you're working from a printed image, is to find the center of your page and of the drawing. So just so you can see it, and obviously if you have this up on your browser, you can't do it, but you can do it on your um, sheet of drawing paper. So if you take a ruler and go from these edges, and I'm using a Sharpie so that hopefully you can kind of see it. you will have the very center of your drawing. And that is a helpful reference point when you're working this way. Okay, now I'm gonna do it also on my page, on my drawing sheet, not with a Sharpie. I think you should be able to see it. Uh, and I, I'm gonna point out that I have taped my page, my drawing sheet, to a piece of cardboard. Um, so I'm, I used artist tape. I'm gonna have a little white um, frame or border around it. And also because cardboard has a slight texture, I will probably get some texture as I'm drawing, um, which is fine with me. I can remove it and work on it off of the cardboard if I wanna get rid of that texture. So if you are doing this, I would take your one of your H pencils or HB or press lightly with whatever you have because these reference marks are, are going to be erased later. But since I want you to be able to see what I'm doing, I'm going to use a, a softer pencil. And I am going to mark the middle on my page here. People who are really serious about realistic drawing often do much more intense grids than this. Um, and I'll explain why in a minute as soon as I finish this. Hopefully you can see this middle X. So my middle point 
is very obvious. And that is going to help me as I try to draw kind of freehand some of these um, sculptural elements that uh, exist in space. Um, so I am going to next identify some of the shapes that I see and get those laid down before long before I start doing any um, detail. Um, what I was going to say about a grid is that some artists like to actually make a grid across their entire page, um, say like one by one inch squares. Um, and you would do that on both your image and your drawing. And then you draw what's inside of the squares. And that really helps you see what you're doing and get proportions right, and things like that. Um, we're not gonna do that today, but that is something you could look into. So when I look at this image, I see a rectangle right here. I see a big, I'm sorry, a triangle. That's a triangle, everyone. <laughs> okay, and then a rectangle here with smaller rectangles kind of receding into the distance, right? So that's what I'm gonna put on my page. And I'm gonna use the ruler to do that. And I'm also gonna draw a center line vertically. which I'll erase later, but that will help me with my rectangle, right? So don't overthink this, just lay it in the way that makes sense to you. This can take a lot of practice. And again, don't do it as dark as I'm doing it. Do it lighter, give it a bottom. And you can always, you know, Think about, okay, when I look at my image, there's the center. And approximately where is this bottom of the triangle going to go? Right here. Um, if you are really, really, really wanting this to be exact, feel free to measure, um, you know, on uh, the image, the bottom of the triangle is approximately two and a quarter inches down from the top of the image. And then you would wanna make sure your ratios were the same on your drawing, mine is slightly bigger than this. And then you would account for that when you came in with your ruler and measured. I am not doing that. I am just gonna trust my eye and that it can always be erased and adjusted later. So I have my center lines and a triangle to indicate the top of this shape. And then I am going to start working on these rectangles. So I'm gonna leave a little space on the side for these shelves. And another one over here, so I can get the outside of the largest rectangle. Um, and then I have this small area with the word architecture in it that I'm going to account for right about here. I'm going to account for this little beveling right here by putting a line here. And this is, you know, where you decide how important it is to you to have details like this. Um, you can get away with, and it might even be, make the drawing more interesting, to not put lines for everything and to use your shading and your value to show what's going on. Um, and we're definitely gonna do some of that in here. Um, and then I'm going to account for this inner triangle. Um, 
and I'm just going to say about uh, an inch will do for this beam right here. Okay, it's starting to come to life. Uh, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret, which is that if you are the kind of artist that hates rulers and hates measuring and doesn't want to do any of this and prefers to freehand, you totally can. I did something like that. I don't know how well you can see it, but I didn't do any measuring. I just looked at it and I drew. And you are totally welcome to do that. Um, and you'll probably end up with a beautiful drawing. Um, it may not have all the correct proportions and things like that, but um, you know, we're not architects here, we are artists. So I am now going to account for some of these just little um, like layers within. So, I'm gonna start comparing where things exist on the page. So like there's the bottom of this that is slightly above the top of this shelf here, right? So that is here and then I'm gonna put the shelves in here and I'm gonna put one line here and one line here like so. And then I am going to account for the doors, which are at an angle, um, heading back to a vanishing point somewhere back here. And because they're at an angle, they are compressed, right? And they form this kind of like trapezoid. Um, if we were looking at it straight on, obviously it'd be much wider but it's receding in space. So we're using perspective to show how this three-dimensional object exists in space. So we're not gonna worry too much about exact angles. Um, when I look at this, I see that this is about the same, it's maybe slightly bigger than this area, this door, receding door. So I'm gonna come over here and give another line right here and do the same thing on the other side. And this is the door receding in space, will be. Okay, so now I have a center, which is going to be the background that we're looking into. I'm going to account for the floor where there's a step down It sometimes starts to get confusing with all your lines. So feel free to start erasing once you are sure something is where you want it to be. So that's gonna be the floor and I'm gonna start being doing a little freehand. Um, I think probably most artists do a little of both measuring um, and trying to do um, linear perspective and also just freehanding things. Definitely more fun that way. So I have accounted for this floor here, which steps down into the wooden floor of the library. And I am going to now account for this um, meeting of the wall and the floor within the library by basically like doubling this little bit. And again, just eyeballing it. And then I want to account for this bit of the ceiling here that we can see. So I'm going to drop down a little. And when I compare this line with this, that helps me place it. So here is the shelf, the top of the shelf line or one of the lines within there that is going to correspond with the ceiling. So I'm just going to make one line all the way across, just eyeballing it again.
And now that I'm looking at it, I want to move my floor down, I think, just a little bit. That's what erasers are for. Um, obviously much different than the charcoal we used where uh, you could just like use your finger to get rid of what you didn't want to see. Um, you do probably want to use an eraser. Uh, I took plenty of art classes in college where professors wouldn't let us use an eraser. So um, I don't know, that's probably good practice, but I don't want to torture anybody. Okay. So at this point, I think I have my shapes. I have my triangle up here, which accounts for about a quarter of the page. I have my receding rectangles as they go in. And I've accounted for these shelves on the side. So now that I have these basic shapes, I can start um, drawing in some of the, the things that would make this unique, make it what it is. So I am going to, let's see, start with what to me is the focal point up here. Um, this little sculptural element here uh, is in perspective with us looking up, right? So we know that that's a circle and a circle is shaped like that, right? But when you're looking at it in perspective, the circle becomes an elliptical shape. So I am just going to center this at the top and just give an elliptical shape there to start. Can everyone see that? Um, and then I'm going to make an oval. You can always, no matter how small or big the shape is or object is, you can, in your mind or literally, if you want to draw them on the image, think of the closest shape, um, basic shape. So to me, that's an oval. And I'm just gonna draw that in there. And I'm going to go ahead and finish this off with a triangle. If you want to use your ruler here, be my guest. I am freehanding probably from here on out. And I'm going to switch to a more um, finished drawing soon so that I can show you, um, you know, how to, how to when you get to the closer to the end, what you can do and what you can expect um, from your drawing. So I'm going to make a rectangle here. And it helps to have that center line because then I can center all my shapes for this object um, on that line. And I'm going to also deal with these curly cue kind of wave shapes. And you'll see that the they stay within the rectangle. So I can just start sketching here. And you don't necessarily want it to touch the center shape, but get close. Definitely, I will work on that more later, but that is going to give me a, an idea of what's going on here. And you'll see that the, that shape um, is also receding. It's foreshortened right here, meaning it's been compressed um, in our vision. And we need to do that on the page. So we're seeing from underneath. And then there's another curly shape here. 
So if I just kind of get these in here and I do this kind of, um, kind of like tentative detail work all over the page, the, the drawing's really gonna start coming together for me. Now that I have that somewhat worked out, I'm gonna move down um, and get some of the bottom worked out. So I'm gonna account for what looks like um, some marble that comes up from the floor down here by, I am gonna use my ruler here and just, I don't know, maybe three quarters of an inch from the bottom give, um, a line, not all the way across, but just on these um, sides here of the entrance. And then I'm gonna actually come down a bit here and erase that top line. Okay. And I am going to add in some more curly details here. So if you look, okay, so here's the bottom of that edge. And that's pretty much the top of that circle in that curly shape. So that's how I can visualize it as I draw it. So you're always comparing you're always comparing one part of the drawing to the next with your eye, or if you want to be very precise with um, measuring tools. And we can account for these doors. So the doors have an edge right here that currently go all the way to the bottom, but I don't need them to do that. But I do want to deal with this angle right here. I don't know if you can see it, but the angle of the doors as they are um, opening out to us. So if you want to be super precise, you could figure out by lining up your ruler at the bottom of the door and making a line and doing the same thing here and you would find the point where they meet and then you could get the exact right angles um, I'm not going to do that. I am going to approximate that angle. To me, it looks something like that. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. One thing I found is that we tend to over exaggerate um, angles when we're left to our own devices, so I try to catch myself. Now I'm going to erase this line because I don't need it anymore. And this is, might be kind of hard for me because I drew um, pretty dark so that you could see, but hopefully yours is not as hard to erase. And I'm also going to give the door its edge, which is just um, right here. So on the drawing, I'm going to just come out about, I don't know, maybe at the most a quarter of an inch and account for that edge. I'm gonna do it over here too. Okay. From here, I kind of feel like I should switch to my more um, finished drawing so that you can see uh, what that looks like. Maybe I'll have them side by side. So here's one that I worked on more um, last night and started adding value to. And it's nowhere finished either, but it's a lot more so than this one. So this one I did use the rulers um, and 
and tried to get correct proportion and things like that, unlike my freehand one. Um, and then I came in with my darkest pencil and I really just like couldn't wait to get to this part, which was this darkest value on the entire image. Um, I didn't even need to erase my lines. I just drew over it and I took the side of my 6B pencil and just really applied the pressure here and came in and gave it the darkest tone I could. Um, and, you know, it's like you don't even need to see the line there. You just are creating your shapes at this point with dealing with the negative space, right? Um, and I can do the same thing over here. So I, you can see how I'm layering it. I gave it a mid tone and now I'm coming over with the darker tone. If you like the look of something like this, this kind of unfinished, um, drawing look, please leave it. It does make for interesting work. Um, there's, and you can always come back in and finish it. But once you've done something like this, where you, I finished this side, it is hard to change. Um, and then I came in and I gave some detail to these beautiful curvilinear sculptural shapes. And I used some cross hatching here. Cross hatching um, is a way to show value. Um, maybe I'll show you how to do it on this one. So cross hatching is a version of hatching and hatching is when you use the lines to show value. So I'm going to give this kind of like acorn shape almost some cross hatching. So at the bottom, I want it to be darker in value. So I'm going to give it these lines that follow the shape. So the shape is like a cup. So the lines themselves follow that. And then I'm going to come back in and layer over some opposite leaning shapes or lines. And they get further apart as I go up, right? Which allows the value to become lighter. And I can do that until I'm satisfied. This I don't really think this drawing lends itself to a lot of cross hatching because cross hatching is so good for um, curved and rounded shapes. And there's not a lot of that in here, but I did use it here. And you will see that I have come in, I've started adding value all over the page here. So I came in with I used my 6B, I think, for this whole thing because you can get such a range from a 6B. So I added some medium tones here. I left all of this white um, until the very end, but I, I did come in and start adding tone here. And then I did it on the sides here. And what my thinking is that I will come in and erase some of my highlights out of here, right? Instead of drawing them all in. Um, for this area, which now has this like pretty light gray, I use a paper towel. You could also use a blending stump, but um, paper towel works fine. And I just picked up some of this dark tone I had used. It's not nearly as movable as charcoal, but you can do quite a bit with it. And I came in and I just gave it this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cover up my highlights right there and show you again how to do them. So now I have a pretty nice range of tones from 
this darkest shade all the way to um, slightly less dark shade into a medium tone into these white tints, which I am going to accentuate further with an eraser. So if you have a um, an eraser with a nice edge like that, this is good for this area and this area where you have these reflective surfaces from your light source. So you can come in like this. Where you and you will start seeing the light reflected in your drawing. And working on value is a very um, kind of repetitive process because you, you you darken something and then you darken something next to it and you realize it's not dark enough or it's too dark. And so you, there's a lot of back and forth um, and takes some patience and time. But if you like to draw, it's one of the things that you love about drawing. So I am making some highlights all over this thing. And I want to deal with this background now. Um, so this background isn't far enough away that it becomes like atmospheric, um, blurry, but it does kind of lose some of the um, sharp edges. So I have already put in the dark shade of this fireplace here and given it a medium tone. But I've left some white blobby areas for the light, for the lamp, the two lamps, I guess. Um, and I am going to just start shaping this area further with just shading and no lines. So I'm gonna use the side of my pencil. And when I get to where the lamp approximately is, just gonna kind of shade it around it. Same with these two. And what I'm gonna find, I think, is that once I darken this as much as I want to, as I want it to be, this area will have to be darker. So that's what I mean about the back and forth. Everything compared to its next thing transitions um, alter the entire piece. So I am going to make this darker. Is everyone doing all right? Okay. Feel free to say anything if you need to, but everybody looks like they're working intently. All right, so a nice medium tone here using the side of my pencil, leaving a white area for these lamps. Now I'm just going to go ahead and start shaping this uh, kind of triangular lampshade just by dealing with the negative space around it. And this could be could stand to be much darker here, I think. And then with this wooden floor here, I have used the tip of my pencil more. And I actually used a light, a, a harder pencil. I think I used an HB. Um, because the, the line of the tip of the pencil kind of mimics the line of the hardwood floor. And then we have this rug here, which again, I can render the shape of it just through shading.
And I'm leaving some white areas here for the reflections that are occurring. Work on this a little more. And I'm really going to work on this area that is so dark and I've started it here, but I want to give a little more definition. So I'm really pressing as hard as I can on this pencil. I'm trying to get a line. Um, feel free. What happened to me just now is that I got a bit of a curved line. Feel free to use your uh, ruler. And now that we're doing some value, um, lots of shading, you might find that you're starting to get pencil on the side of your hand and smearing. So this is a good time if, if you have a, just a blank sheet of paper to lay it under your hand. You can also, there are people who work, like if you're right-handed, you start in the left hand upper corner and work down this way. Um, so that you are never smearing, or I guess it would be the opposite if you're left-handed, but I really value working on the entire drawing at once, so that doesn't work for me, but you can experiment. Um, and so at this point, you might just want to start squinting your eyes and like looking at your drawing. You can also step away from it and see if the values when you squint your eyes, like the dark and light areas that really pop out, if they correspond to, to what you're drawing, right? And if there's any area that you're like, man, I really need that for this drawing to, to be there for me, you start working on that area. And when I do it, I just feel like this whole mid-tone area needs to be a little, um, have higher contrast. So I am going to maybe take a 3B or a B, 2B, softer pencil, but not as soft as my 6B, and come in and start giving some mid-tone. Leaving my reflective areas so that I don't have to come in and erase all that again. This area in here, this highly detailed area, would be a nice place to start showing um, some high contrast value. I could darken these curvilinear shapes underneath. But you'll see like once you do something like that, make a really dark area, um, the whole drawing starts to feel a little off balance. So, the, or at least if you're me, uh, maybe I'm super OCD or something, but I, uh, when I see those dark areas, then I'm like, oh man, I need to come down here and make sure that the value down here uh, matches what I'm seeing up here. So for instance, I could darken where these shelves are and that would help on the sides. Now I'm just really laying it in thick on these sides. And I'm being kind of messy and that's okay. Um, that's a personal, preference if, if you like to see um, the mark of the hand or not. And then I'm going to come in with an eraser and give some indication of these 
shelves that have books on them and there's there's light reflected on them. Um, maybe I will even use my white eraser. And I'm not I'm not going to count these and measure in between them. To me, that's not important. If it is to you, please do that. I just want an indication that there's some high contrast stuff going on over here. And then I will erase here, clean it up a bit. I like the way it looks when you erase rather than draw in sometimes, particularly in things that are not like a main focal point, which this is not. So now I have an indication of that shelf. I'm gonna come back in with a 2B pencil, give that mid-tone next to it. Use my paper towel to blend. So this is requiring some cleanup, but that's okay. Okay, so it's starting to come together. Um, I will do this other side as well. Um, and another thing that we could deal with, I'm gonna check the time. Okay, well, it, we're getting low on time, but I do wanna say like these areas on your image that are very detailed are good ones um, to lay down a tone with your pencil and then come in with a kneaded eraser or a very, um, sharp edged eraser of any kind, but with a kneaded eraser, you can make a point. You can come in and pick up pigment to form these kind of like, well, these are definitely floral textures, but these um, kind of dotted textures here. Um, and the same thing with this word architecture, if you choose to put that in. Um, I would lay down a tone and erase and then come back in and give that outer line, that contour to it, the contour line. But that's entirely up to you. So I am going to just give a few final touches to this drawing and um, and then see what you guys see what you guys have. Um, I'm excited to see, I'm always excited to see what you guys have worked on. Another thing that will help um, this start to feel finished is the is to add in these circular shapes. Again, I'm just eyeballing them, sketching them in. But once you start adding these little details all, in, all over the drawing, um, it really starts to feel like, oh yeah, I can do this. This is going to look like something.
really satisfying thing to do is once you have a tone <clears throat> here on this top part, take an edge of a nice clean, my eraser's not clean, but the edges, um, and get these highlights, these curved highlights right here. Very, very satisfying and really helps the drawing. Okay, I think I'm going to stop. It can be very hard to stop once you're well into this. Um, but hopefully you have an idea of how this can work, whether or not you've gotten, I'm sure you haven't gotten to this stage because I spent a lot longer on this and you're probably still somewhere in this stage. Maybe just started adding some details and some shading um wherever you're at that's great and uh i'm super curious to see if anybody wants to share anyone anyone <laughs> okay if you are sharing um unmute yourself so that you become i don't think you can see it okay <laughs> is this um diane I know. Okay, Diane. hi. <laughs> hi, I didn't get very far at all. Oh, no, but you did. I did. I, I mean, I swear I spent hours on mine. So yeah. that's awesome. How, do you feel yeah. like it, you have some guidelines to do it? Yes, I do. I like how you erase things to highlight. I like that. Um, I've never drawn with lines and it did keep me in the middle of stuff. And it did give me, even if just I had one line going down the middle, I feel like I made a lot of progress. I learned a big thing today. <laughs> right? It makes all the difference. And if you're like me, you're resistant to um, rulers, yeah, <laughs> things like that. But um, it does make all the difference. So good yeah. job. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for all that you've taught me. <laughs> uh, let's see. I see Joan is unmuted. Joan and has a drawing up. Yes. Oh my gosh, look at that. That's amazing. Well, thank you. How do you feel? <laughs> I feel really pretty good about it. <laughs> so did you um, did you freehand that or did you use some measuring then? I used some measuring and um, have erased most of it. It's, it's a combination, freehanded measuring. Uh -huh. I, I, the, the, the arch is all freehand. Oh, oh um, the arches, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mommy. You have um, a really nice um, range. Sorry. You have a really nice contrast. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. Then after the banner of this press, may you help me? Um, okay, let's see. Yes, I will. Who's sorry. talking? Is that Beverly? Hi, Beverly. <laughs> no? Okay. Oh, wait, okay. unmute yourself. There you go. Let's see. Okay, I'm not as far along. That's okay. That's beautiful. Oh, you did some of the, um, you definitely used rulers. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. And you started with some of the detail. You've got such beautiful um, value started here. And you started even with what could become cross hatching up there. Right. I don't know. I'd like to play around on all of it. <laughs> I know, right? It's hard yes. to know sometimes. Good Hi, luck. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're Thank you. Hi, I'm Katie. All right. Who else wants to show? Anyone? Heidi? Hmm. Okay, now I've got you all. Jan, look at yours. Yeah, it turned out pretty good. You know, it's a lot to do in a short time, but um, it was a good challenge. Yeah, I think you got a lot done. Um, filling in all that negative space really gets it going, right? Yeah, the top especially, that, you know, that was fun. 
Would... Yeah, I think the the bottom with the, the doors and all the lines can get really confusing and you really have to spend a lot of time on it. Yeah. Yeah. So this was fun. Thank you. You're welcome. Good job. Um, let's see. If, if you have one, just go ahead and start talking. And Anne. I, this is way beyond my skill set. <laughs> but it was interesting to see how artists make things. So that was very valuable. And so I decided to draw one of the chair backs because it had a lot less detail. So it was fun. Um, you guys like a way ahead of me, but I well, learned a lot and it was really a lot of fun. Awesome. I'm glad. The, do you feel like just having some basic things like the center of the, the page? Yeah, the line because it, I look at a lot of art and it's, um, as a docent, a lot of times at the Art Museum, we, we, we focus on the finished product, but I'm really curious about how did they make that? And I hadn't realized that there was like so much rulers and, and erasing and, and I just, I don't know, I guess I had this idea that artists just sat down and it just poured out of them and obviously <laughs> it does not, so. Well, it depends, I think, on what kind of art you're looking at, but. <laughs> That's true, but it, I, I, it was really, I think, I really enjoyed learning how the thought process and the, oh, if you don't like it, erase it and do this and do that. And, and I hadn't realized how, um, how much of art making is an extended process. So yeah, so I encourage all of you to come in and take a tour. I'm one of the docents at Central. So, and that's what my favorite room in Yay. Central is there. Yay. Yay. So, and I know I've seen a lot of the books. Chris has let me, because we're friends I, and I've, I'm also a book binder. So I oh, cool. love to look at the books. I know a lot about the books. I know some gossip about <laughs> that room. So awesome. um, when you, when we can have tours again, please call uh, Scott Wolf and, or email and, and get a tour going because there's lots of great things in there. You're yes. right. Thank mm -hmm. you. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Any other brave souls? Um, Lisa? Hi, Alita. Hi. Let's see. I'm going to put you on so I can actually see. Hello. There. So I have oh, look at that. I love all your, um, your line work. Your, I really <laughs> see your hand, how you were moving. Let's put it that way. Okay. <laughs> for good or for ill. Yeah, it's very like rapid. Like, were you really going for it? <laughs> I was really going for it. Yes. I was figuring out what the pencils did. So thank yeah. you. Yeah. And, but I mean, good job. I'm impressed. You, you worked the whole page. Good job. Thanks, Alita. <laughs> All right. We probably have time for one more if anybody wants to pick it. Are you unmute yourself? I see you're showing it. There you go. Well, it's very light because I'm still using my HB pencil, but getting those curves right, just the top of that thing is plenty, but I love the, the ruler work. And I certainly learn more about drawing. I've taken drawing classes. I, I'm a watercolor painter, but I just, um, you can always learn something new and it always helps your eye, I think, to work with various shapes, the straight and the curved. Definitely, that's an excellent point. Yeah, it, it, you've got a great start there. I hope you keep working on it. Thank you. Um, okay. I think we're good unless anybody really wants to. Um, I, I feel like if anybody wants to send these to me, please do if you keep working on them or just as they are. Like I said, I'll add um, to my collection of work and we'll get some credit for it one of these days. <laughs> and um, thank you for coming. The next one is May 28th and we are using um, ink washes. And I will definitely have kits to be picked up. I will have enough for everyone because um, ink might be something not everyone just has on hand like you do a pencil. Um, but we'll be using brushes and probably a, a decorative piece um, like a marble sculpture or something. 
because that does really well with an ink wash. So that's all. Quick question about yeah. the kids. Uh, when are they available? When are they available or where? Well, both, actually both. Okay. <laughs> um, so I will have those available. I've already received the order. So I can have those available the week of. So the next one is on a Friday. I'll have them available starting Monday in the fine arts room at Central Library. Okay, great. Thank you. Cool. All right. It was fun. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>